Um, this is our first in-person event since the pandemic started and it's just really great to see all these people gathered together in this one room and to finally experience this energy in person. Uh, to give a brief introduction about us, uh, the British Centre for Legal Policy is an independent think tank doing legal research to make better laws and improve governance for the public good. With offices in New Delhi, Bengaluru and Mumbai, we aim to deliver high quality, peer reviewed original legal research and engage with governments, public institutions and other CSOs and experts to inform policy making. The climate and ecosystems team at Vidhi, in particular, aims at reforming conservation laws to make them more ecocentric and proactive. We believe that meaningful public engagement, both at the time of training as well as implementation, is critical for the success of any law and policy. In this context, the Green Mandate series is an extension of our efforts to raise public consciousness on law and policy issues on critical environmental questions. The purpose of this talk is not really to engage in a debate, but rather to deep dive um, into these questions and have developed an in-depth understanding of the nuances and complexities involved. Today, in our fourth edition of this series, we are going to discuss the Cheetah Reintroduction Plan in India, which has gained traction in the last few years. And we are extremely honoured to host Dr. Maharaj Kumar Ranjit Singh as our guest speaker for today. An authority in wildlife conservation in India, Dr. Ranjit Singh was born in the royal family of the princely state of Varpanir in Saurashtra, Gujarat. He joined the Indian Administrative Services in 1961 and held important positions at both state and central levels. As a collector of Mandala and MP, he helped save the critically endangered central Indian Varsinga from extinction. He is, he is the chief architect of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and was the first director of wildlife preservation. He was instrumental in the identification of the first tiger reserves in India as the member secretary of the task force formulating Project Tiger. He also played a critical role in launching numerous projects such as Project Crocodile and Project Snow Leopard. Dr. Ranjit Singh has also served as regional advisor in nature conservation at the United, for the United Nations Environmental Program from 1975 to 1980. His paper assessing the potential for reintroducing the cheetah in India became the precursor for cheetah introduction project in India. He was also part of the cheetah reintroduction task force and co-authored action plan for introduction of cheetah in India with special emphasis on first release site, Kuno National Park, which was released in 2021. Dr. Ranjit Singh has published more than 50 papers on nature conservation and has authored two books. Honoring his unparalleled contribution to the protection of Indian wildlife, the eastern subspecies of Indian swamp deer is named after him. He was awarded the Sanctuary Lifetime Service Award in 2014. Sir, thank you very much for agreeing to be a part of this conversation with us today. We also have on the panel Mr. Devadetya Sena, who will be moderating the session today. Devadetya is the lead of the Climate and Ecosystems team at Vidhi. He is founder and trustee of Indian Ecology and Natural History Foundation and is also a recipient of the Sanctuary Wildlife Service Award in 2019. Devadatyo is a member of IUCN's Species Survival Commission's Bear Specialist Group. Without further ado, I hand it over to Dev to take us forward in this conversation today. It is indeed a great privilege uh, for me to join the session with Dr. Ray and the Interviewee. So, uh, it is indeed a great privilege for me to moderate the session with Professor Ray and the Interviewee. Honestly, I feel I am too junior to your uh, conversation with him, but I will try to do justice to my uh, role. Uh, before I start the conversation, I will ask you some questions to him. So, I have to I'll uh, just tell you briefly about the Cheetah and Tiles score project, what is all about. And so Cheetah, this Asian Cheetah is uh, one of the five species found in the world. And uh, it was once found from North Africa to, from Middle East to the uh, Indian subcontinent. But now their population is only restricted to the Iran. And now the number, the, the, the latest report is just 12 in the whole world. It's just like this great growth. 
And in India, Ishil Chitras were the school that they used to found in 1947. The last recorded history of Chita was in Sarbuja in Chhattisgarh today. So Maharaja Ramanuj Sukhar Singh, he did hunted three of the Chitras. That's the last record we have. And in 1952, we officially declared Chitras as extinct from India. And since then, there have been attempts to bring Chita from Iran to India, the Ishta Chita. In 1970s and then till 2009. Uh, but we didn't succeed. Then there was a plan to introduce African cheetah, which is again a subspecies, one of five subspecies, <laughs> uh, by the Mr. Brown Forest, and we will discuss more about it in the conversation. But just to give a brief background about this cheetah inclusion project, so what is all about this uh, African cheetah project? The plan is to translocate 50 cheetahs in the next five years, with about 10 to 12 cheetahs bought it from South Africa and Namibia. Uh, in the first year, on the experimental basis. And uh, the first uh, site will be the Puno Park National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Now this project is also due to conclusion because this same site was considered for light transformation from here to Puno. And there was a stay, brief stay from Supreme Court and then APC and National Tiger Social Authority have uh, assured the court that there will be no impact on the light transformation. Then court uh, allowed it for the uh, expert committee, which serve was also part of the committee and the guidance of the expert committee. And there is an action plan for the intrusion Chita India, which was released by the State Environment Forest this year. And if everything falls in place, uh, then we may see the first founding population Chitas to be introduced this year itself. And uh, so, sir, uh, before we move on to this topic and ask you about uh, ecological and uh, various policy and legal questions, so I uh, want to know from you that you know uh, this whole project is seen as a landmark project in the conservation of any species. And, uh, Behind every big reform, there is always a story, like you know, some trigger point, like you know, how it, you know, materialized, how it started. So, because you have been part of this project since 1970s, right, like, as beginning when it was started, and you have been part of several uh, follow ups to this project. So, can you just uh, share some stories from you, like what really motivated? Because you have been following this issue as a mission, and you know, it's a dream, uh, I'm not wrong, to see cheetahs and all the big four cats in India. So, just you can share some. Thank you very much. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the and the organization for giving me this opportunity because it is an establishment Oh, sorry. Um, very energizing for a person like me to, um, to interact with people who understand and I'm sure have questions to ask. Um, and with a valid. Uh, Doubts that they may be, and I, I do my best to answer them. Uh, the story is a very <coughs> long and, uh, and <coughs> a bit uh, uh, <coughs> circular, but I won't go into uh, too much of it. They ask why the cheetah. <coughs> Uh, and the um, question usually comes up, why the cheetah? And the second question, which is very often asked, since we have problems of our own with other species, that they are getting worse, why don't we go and save uh, the other species, like the tigers, like the others, rather than going for the cheetah? It's a very valid question. Uh, at the same time, the influences of uh, administration, and I put it across like this. I was fortunate that I worked at a time that there was a for conservation, when there was, because without political support, it is. I gave this idea to Mrs. Gandhi about the wildlife act. Well, there was not at that time. I remember the meeting in September 1971. And, uh, and the idea of central projects, and she took it up. And now they are part of the, the act, and now we are going to keep it here. We are going to change it. Without that, 
it is roughly cost. But then again, why would it cheat up? The, this country has been extremely fortunate that despite the humongous pressure of population, poverty, ignorance, land hunger, we have not lost in historical time a single large alien species nor a large bird species. Some may not have come. That is a great trait that some is not taking. But the mammals, the only two other ones are the Javan and the Sumatran rhinoceros, which are very good. In peninsula in India, in historical times, we have lost a single species that you go elsewhere and you uh, in the big. At the same time, now, of course, there are not species of the animals of extinction, but I won't go into that just now. There you might be familiar with the story of the prodigal son. That he who goes away becomes a little more dearer than the one you have. And you give special attention. It's a special thing. We lost the cheetah, we want it back. But it's not just this cheetah, it's what goes with it. And uh, if I may say so, we have taken advantage of that. We should take greater advantage of that. You might have read in my book a uh, religious sentiment, which is a tremendous force in this country. But uh, uh, Chita doesn't have to have to be a fortune tree, the one of some god. So oh, that I can't do this. But uh, yes, but, but symbolism is uh, the first night. Tiger reserve were selected not on the basis of tiger population. There were more tigers in Kaziranga than they were in Manas. We picked Manas. Because at that time, Manas had the largest number of Shedu one species in the country, 29. No other species. It's a magnificent area. You see, Wotokha, what can you do to upgrade it? To make it from second class to first class, put it rather grassy. That was the whole objective. And we utilized the tiger as a flagship, as a symbol, as an icon, to save, in my opinion, what in my opinion is more valuable than the tiger, the habitat of the tiger. More important uh, than anything else in this country where our protected areas are very small, fragmented, and they are suffering. They are islands in seas of humanity and they are suffering from the island syndrome. You know, species get extinct quicker in islands and in segregated areas that they do when they have connectivity. And they are many reasons to read their hypothesis on this particular Now, <coughs> so, we utilize that to have different habitats in the tiger in the first night and then it spread. The same way we utilize the, uh, the uh, snow leopard to protect the Himalayas and the, and the mountains. Because I have just completed a book on the mountain map of the world and there is out of the Simply all species would be surprised that 40 plus are in India, uh, are in, uh, in, uh, in Asia, and undivided India have almost 30. Look at one, one half of the whole world. And we only talk of the tiger. What of the island? What of the hardcore? Just because you can't drive a sheep up there and see them, they are not grand. They are magnificent. So you are. The, uh, the, uh, there is a saying in my native Gujarati, which I am rather trying to repeat. Lakh Maldu, for Lakh Na Karan let a lakh die, let not the savior of the lakh die. The habitats are the saviors of those. So you can have uh, the habitat without a wild animal, you cannot have a wild animal without the habitat. Why don't you think of that? We go to national parks only to overlap tigers. 
we go by the, you see, this is the other thing, and I'm not going to go because I have critics my own family, so he talked much about, uh, you know, uh, this mega mammal syndrome, very much that it is. But, and, and we utilize the uh, whale shark to do, we utilize the dolphin to save the, uh, the, uh, uh, the river ecosystem. Incidentally, you mentioned about the project that was being the most successful project, the most successful project overall is the crocodile project. But there is a reason for that anyway. And there it was. You see, the one was to bring back that. The other one was to focus attention on another biome. And that biome is today the most threatened. You see, it's not just the grassland, it's a grassland forest mosaic. The acacias, the xylophytic vegetation, the, the grasslands with the forest. There is a misconception because we see cheetahs running around in uh, the plains of the Serenity and we think that the cheetah is only uh, a, a, a grassland species. But it is a grassland forest mosaic species. It requires forest for its young. And you will be surprised. In the 20th century, the last data was not in the other regions. You can ask me about that later. The cheetah, the last cheetah for 50, they did not get extinct in 47. Korea's son, Ramsar, was the person that saw them in the same place and related in 1958. So I say they got, they got into, uh, they got extinct in the 50s, but anyway, that's semantics. They took to Saar forest. There is a thing about the Saar. The Saar is the grassland forest today because they have these frost hollows where Cheetah and the Barasinga and the Ogdiya So the, 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 the cheetah would remain on the periphery and go and attack and, and catch whatever prey they put in the morning and eat them and come away. So they did. They, it's suboptimal habitat. They can survive there. Even in South Forest. But they would do very well in, in um, the uh, uh, in an area which you have both grasslands and less in xylophytic bushes and all that. This is the most productive ecosystem in the country. Uh, it is the most grasslands and forest biomes, mosaics are the most productive uh, ecosystems in the whole world. The largest uh, biomass uh, of is in Kaziranga, the grassland forest. High grassland, low grassland. You have the highest productivity. So, uh, we have to bring focus on that. It is extremely important. India, India today has the largest livestock population in the whole world. There is a forest policy, there is no grassland policy. I tried and tried and that failed. This is Nobody wants to prove it. We've given away our grassland. But I could go on and on. The most endangered species in this country are grassland specific species the Floribans, the Baskets, <laughs> the Parasingas, Manitoutia, and I could go on. Anyway. But to come back to it, to focus attention, like we did with the tiger of the forest in the country, like we did with the snow leopard of the mountains of the country, to focus on the grassland forest projects, which today are of the great protection, it's not the only the basket. The basket and the, I think, are not today going to be synonymous. You can have the. But you look at it, today the most certain map is not the. It is not even perhaps, though it is very close to it, the Hangul, Kashmir, Barasinda. It is the 
scattered groups, reduced to two populations, I think, or less than 100. And the, and the irony and the tragedy is that if it goes, not a tear will be shed. If a tiger is killed outside of Gourmet National Park, it makes it to the, the front page of the country of India. And why not? It must. It must work. If the hognail gets extinct on which the tiger depends, then there are less than 20 left that I know of in COVID, not a tear would be shed. That is the failure. And that is where I consider I have failed too. We have not done enough. Uh, it's too tiger centric. It's for We must. Uh, so we have to go on and we have to focus on that. We need to focus attention on the production of the grassland. We are blessed with the sun of tropical so that it has the power of recovery. But now, like the last camel, there's probably camel back. That recovery. You, you, you protect a, a, a grass uh, area for three seasons and you see that come. 18 to 21 times uh, uh, productivity increases. The protein content of the grasses grow from 3 to 4 percent to 26 percent. Annual grasses, heteropogon grasses, turned into anthropogon perennial grasses. The whole thing changes. But will we give that three years? Corn rope is unquote. Grazing corn ropes are back. More back. If by any chance, therefore, we can do something for and if we can in the process do something to save the caribou, the desert can, the wood, we mentioned this again. If we can save the, the other grassland different products, the same uh, topography, less of product. Uh, and there are a number of other desert parks. Uh, then there is a widening of the conservation phase. There are other things. And I'll come to the last point why to answer that question or not. The first thing, the, the cheetah is not going to cost us money. The cheetahs are coming free, they have been transported free. They should not even in those days, the town still be uh, uh, the And the cheetahs are being given to us. And they will be given to us the uh, Iranian cheetah, which is a tragedy, but I can answer any question. Now, to come back to this major point as to why we are not focusing. Uh, look, if today uh, the cheetah was coming, the, it's very interesting that because the lion and cheetah were coming, there was focus and attention from Kuru. The biomass momentum in the extent that Lori Marker, which is going to give to us, Cheetah has certified in a report that the grey bees in Puma, when we met them, was better than the grey bees in Namibia in most parts, which is saying a lot. Namibia has the last number of Cheetah in the world. Um, so, the moment this report gave a state, this leg, I'm sorry to say, deliberately this leg. I will go into that a bit. Uh, the government attention dropped and uh, poaching started again, very based on that. Now, again, when they know, again going up into something. We bureaucrats work better under a project than we work. Today, the tiger project has been lost. It's the, when you get posted there, you're carrying on something that somebody else. That zeal has come. That thing is managed here. Ego. If you can use ego for conservation, join. Are you Some chalta hai, sharp, sharp, and big. Provided you do it for a particular reason and not selfish motive. Why not? Uh, you're not teaching anybody. 
Anyway, so uh, from that angle, uh, the 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 group people who did the project has recovered at that what point of time? There were far more drivers outside project drivers there you go, with the right side. Two, we started with nine, twelve, and now over fifty. So we covered most of the drivers. Are there any drivers outside of uh, any protected area? Drivers of protected kindly cut off most of that. So ultimately you are only going to save in effectively managed protected areas. You are going to stay from the standpoint. Your national and national heritage. Everything which is uh, endowed to this great country by nature. Uh, and that heritage is equally important to the modern than any man made heritage, cultural, religious. Who we to have? They are also careful. They have their, there should be sacros. Would you, would you, that's what I said yesterday, would you take if there was diamonds under the garden, would you blast beside for minerals near Ajanta or Elora? That why blast in Kaza, Karna and Kajasta. And also, good to psychotic, they should be a big one, which is not cross, but I won't go into all that. They coming back to the Chita. If we focus on that, Kuno itself will get upgraded. Kuno itself will get upgraded as it was for the Lion. And you can ask for the Lion. And if today everybody is, the whole place is Other yet, एक जानवर की एक्सपेक्टेशन से एक पाक सुधर जाता है तो हाफ द बैटल इज गॉन सर आई स्टॉप टू कैन वी नाउ ड्रॉप एंड यू आर बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू स्टिकिंग आई वाज ड्रॉप नाउ दिस इज माय प्रॉब्लम आई गेट कैरी टू मी हैव यू कॉल्ड फॉर यू ड्रॉप
So sorry, yeah. so initially, uh, so uh, so now we just talk about Tiger and all this thing. Now I want to break the focus on some Sudeshi. We should talk about that. You know, last night, like other, you know, have got many uh, interviewed by like you know Henry. So now Kundu National Park is a prime uh, special example of Rajasthan. It is maintained as a lion. And for last uh, decade at least. Now, Kuno is not only really famous for lions and uh, cheetah, which has not come to it inside of Kuno. We, we, have, we haven't seen lion or cheetah in the last several decades in Kuno, but Kuno uh, is known for leopards, the resident leopards. Now, talking about some ecological aspects of it, there are medium carnivores like wolves, jackals, hyenas, which are Indian species. They are equally threatened now because there is no uh, data on them, there is no research on them, they are highly negative species. Once the habitat is managed well, so I am not talking about the integrity cooperation, which I will come later, because there is cooperation with cheetah, tiger, and other species also. Yeah. And cheetah with no inter focus, because we are in investment, you said there is no investment, I think hundreds of crores are being invested just to maintain the population of cheetah. Founding population of the next 30 40 years. I will, so let me complete the question. So, uh, so now there is also news for a tiger coming from Dhanthambur to Kuno, which is affected by a very active corridor, but tiger don't stay there. The reasoning given is that the habitat and the place base may not be adequate. But now, because when you bring the cheetahs, you will maintain the habitat. There is a plan which says that we will repopulate the habitat with some uh, black birds and cheetahs to supplement the prey base. Now, uh, in the action plan, the cheetah introduction action plan, so I am not looking about what you believe and what, what is the uh, plan is there the ministry. This says that I will quote it. So I will not summarize. It says the leopard population in the landscape needs to be managed during initial years of cheetah introduction, four to five years, so as to avoid or minimize interspecific strife and allow the cheetah population to stabilize. Now this doesn't stop there only. There is more to it. It says radio bombing of leopards and other predators such as leopards, hyenas, jackals, foxes, jungle cat, etc. in Kuno prior to release of cheetah and then monitor them at the same temporal scale. Now says based on this research. Management strategies to permit and promote coexistence or to manage these animal populations need to be decided for the future. That means we are thinking for whether we want to control the population of the animals or not. Now, it also indicates, now this is very important, that cheetah, uh, we know that you know, uh, when we introduce species, it may not survive. There will be some 5% growth in this. They have the, like, you know, uh, estimated that cheetah will grow by 5% in everything possible places, including mortalities. Now, there is a plan to supplement this cheetah population with more cheetahs in the down the lane. So it will take, it says, it will take, this is official uh, document, it's not I'm taking from anyone. This is a particular statement, it says, it will take at least 15 years for the area to reach its carrying capacity level of cheetah and to reach the landscape carrying capacity, operation size is 36 cheetahs, in the time required will be close to 30 to 40 years. The whole process entails supporting the mortalities with the introduction of more individual animals from Africa. So now, I have two follow-up questions. First question uh, is that, cheetah is a very docile animal. It is prone to be hunted by carnivores, you know, in Africa, for example, like, you know, cheetahs don't stay there, hyenas are there. But they are very prone to hunting by other carnivores. It's so a very docile, very, you know, it can run fast, but for 30 seconds, it cannot go beyond that. So, Kuno, whether we are willing to sacrifice Kuno as an experiment ground for at least next 2-3 decades, just for the cheetahs, and in, at the cost of managing other carnivores like jackals, goes because this option is open. Government has given the option open that we may need to manage the other carnivore population. And uh, whether the cheetah will now suppose tiger from Andamur comes to Kuno. So whether the cheetah will take up uh, like precedence or the tiger or the other species. So this is my question, first question to you. Then I will come to the question. Uh, you use the word sacrifice. What do you mean by sacrifice? Sacrifice means that there's an option to like, you know, where you are taking other, keeping other animals as a like, you know, a second citizen, like, you know, cheetah is a priority because we have, because this, they have maintained, they have said that we may need to manage, they have called to manage other carnivores. That means you are like somehow sidelining the other uh, carnivores in the landscape. You are prioritizing cheetah for everything. It's like this, right. The, uh, at this moment, their tribes are only from here, they are never. Uh, unlike Africa, where the uh, hyenas grow, spotted hyena, and they are in fact both a threat to cheetah uh, cubs. Our striped hyena does. It's a, it's, they're very few, and it's a lone animal, so when the cheetah can stand them up. So that is not a problem. Jackals are not a problem. Look. Uh, it is a standard practice in Africa that you first introduce the, and this is what I do, the oak group when they put up the cheetah.
that was the uh, lie. I mean, there is no question of uh, priority. Uh, the priority of land is paramount. It's our animal and it needs a second home. Incidentally, if you lie to declare who was the sanctuary in the park, the forest edition. And I did it because it looked very lionish country. And, and I'm talking about 1982 when I was uh, uh, 81. And when I went there as far as the it also interesting that the first lion, African lion, were introduced by the Sindhya in It is very nice, but, but this is being done in Africa and it can be done in India. And it's a traditional way, of it. it's a standard practice. You introduce the smaller uh, carnivora first. One later, and they become uh, resident. They will not go away. They will not. You see, uh, territoriality is an extremely uh, important factor in animal ecology and behavior. Have you seen, um, if you see the legs of, of black buck, uh, and they are and they are marked in small areas, and the one animal goes into the other and he stays back. I've seen a single horn and uh, black buck chase or a very large male of his territory. Once he is taken possession of that territory, he becomes that confidence in that once he goes outside. So, to come back to the cheetah and any lesser than when they want to introduce a leopard, they introduce a leopard first and then the lion in Africa. Or the cheetah first, two liters and they will not go. First liter is good, second liter you can't drive them out. They will be there. Then you can put the other lion and you can do what you want. And, and they will uh, 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 be conflict. They will be occasional killings. That is to be expected. And uh, if it were the, uh, the Iranian cheetah, it would have been something else. The Iranian cheetah is the most precious animal in the Asia for my part of the And uh, we can go into that later. But we can't think of the ethic. We have, I have in my book, I've given a, a, a agreement with the government of, of uh, Iran in the 70s of the exchange of the cheetah with Iran. But that was, that is history. Uh, uh, today they don't. At that time they have 300, 200, 60, 250, I think we have 300 plus. Uh, so, uh, the ones, the cheetah uh, gets established, you can have the lion, and they, you will kill, they kill some of the I said. But let me say this, they are coming from an area uh, like, like, um, Namibia. Namibia allows CITES permission of 150 to 250 cheetah removed or shot in a year. 150 to 200. And uh, Laurie Parker tells me there is 14, so they do 300. So 250 to over Vesimi they ran, so to Thore Yaha Ajay or Thore Yaha It's not such a big uh, thing, you must be prepared for that. You must be prepared, but they can live in their position. I would draw, draw your attention to a, a, a map of Irfan Khabi, the medieval uh, of Mughal times. Mughal times, may have four large carnivora in the Kuno area lion, tiger, cheetah, leopard. If I can see all four, I pray to God, I'll die a happy of that. All for him. They have Tamil only three dedication on a take your name. Was it? Was it? So, 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 I have a claim drift and I have one follow up question to you. So, we're talking about time when your habitats were quite continuous. So, now, TS and India are very island sick of mosaic of human settlements. You know, and we talk about the size of the TS in India, they are marginally like, you know, very, very less compared to what in Africa we have. So, now the thing is that, I was reading somewhere this African cheetah, they are very low density animals. The density is two animals per 100 square kilometer. 
So I think in India, we have hardly, they have 20 PAs, which should be more than 500 square kilometers. You can go better. So now, Africa, which is a sparsely populated, even if the conflict is there, it's also a threat to where we can come. It's still a vulnerable issue. It's not a least concern. It is horrible to extension. I have seen us say this thing. Now, uh, this uh, the African chitta, not the African chitta. Uh, not the Shrek chitta, they are vulnerable. They are all vulnerable. That means they are a threat. So, wherever uh, hunt, uh, hunting is allowed, so that's a different issue in Africa. Tourism is not another aspect to it. But now, talking about India, we are living a species from Africa. And this species is like, they are used to be a very really sparsely populated country. The PAs are very large, they are contiguous, and you know, they have enough place to move around. India, the thing is very different. We are the second most populous country in the world. Our PAs are a fragments, small, small islands. Even Kuno uh, like is connected to some landscape, but the whole landscape is not that. And this uh, pressure from uh, you know, human distance will be there, always be there. In India, everywhere is there. And uh, now, uh, let's assume that the Chitra Krishna project is success, like, successful in these three, four decades. That is what the minimum standard of the government of India, 30, 40 years will take. Now, this Chita will definitely disperse, like tigers are moving out of their uh, tiger reserves and going to new places. So, we need those areas to, for Chita to naturally expand. Okay. Now, how will you manage the perfect human beings? Because now, see, except example of gear lines, which is an example in the world, like, you know, the human are as a coexist. But we talk about tiger, we talk about leopard, we talk about hyena, we talk about jackals. There are enough compositions, you, there are enough evidence, but still, people are not so much uh, comfortable living with the animal. Now, you Bring a cheetah, suppose it becomes successful, uh, what is the plan to, like, you know, uh, how we compete with the human beings and how we compete with other uh, top leaders like tigers? So, my primary question is with the human beings. How we compete with the human beings? Uh, <coughs> this is a very obvious and a very good question. Firstly, there is no report of the cheetah ever having killed a human being. Unlike lions, tigers, and leopards. There has been a record of a cheetah attack in Skipa for uh, uh, being a but there is no record of it. The cheetah will not kill the sacred cow. It will uh, uh, only at the most uh, kill your sheep and goats for which you are not to say. Yes, they will go out. Surplus animals everywhere we go and connect them back in, in a uh, there is a connectivity which could take us into the Stogard area, and Stogard, and hopefully into uh, the Jalawar district, and to the Ubudgar has the largest in total uh, 80 square kilometers, uh, political, yeah, for the tiger. <laughs> The area they enclosed is uh, very cheap. Huh? So, if they go into these areas, they will, uh, will have to be managed. They will uh, probably be, uh, you see, Rajasthan is also watching. There is a second place already in Madhya Pradesh, Maradi, where you can have the cheap. And uh, there are tigers there. As I said, they will be conflict. They will be a some losses, but you can you can have them and they survive. You mentioned about 30, 40 years of Chitana. Do you know in what who can become in 30, 40 years and manage properly? <laughs> Think of that. You see what the cascading effect of our habitat management. As I say, what has happened in today? That is the name of the tiger you say the habitat. And if by that you can say that mosaic, I, I would like to bring back the terrible report. It's not cited and it's gone. It was there. It was very much there. It, it's a terrible country. Uh, the wolf is a survivor. The wolf is there. So wolf is not bothered. The wolf is always. Uh, and I have in, in the periphery area, the they won't eat their own uh, sheep and goat. They will be some amount of nothing, but all the large cats of the world, the chita causes the least problem. So that is especially for 
human life and to that extent livestock. So I don't think it would be that much of a thing. And then there is a sense of pride. People have already started buying land there and uh, you know tourism doesn't take it is Panamito Bajata. You see, if we can save the your national parks in centuries when I went about uh, declaring them in Madhya Pradesh as forest secretary. Or those parks in centuries in very dynamic part of in the last forty years. Anyways. So uh, those were those are the last games to go for nature to survive in this country. So if by cheetah, uh, that was we can say certain biomes, I think the purpose would be half And uh, as I said, while we don't want to look at cheetah, and, 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 and the, the tiger can come in, the tiger can come in. Uh, nobody wants the tiger uh, removed. Certain amount of leopards can be, if they are troublesome, you could remove them. If you take out leopards and take them, you won't kill them. You translocate them somewhere. That may have to be done. And you see, uh, I was involved in it. Uh, we bureaucrats, we like to put our things so that bad me in a bad So, uh, yes, this is, we all very keen on saving our vaccine. I agree with them. They have made this provision if necessary, we have to do that. We need not. We may not. But if necessary, we need to do that so that everything should be forewarned. That we can not do that. You need to do that. You are doing this and that. You are removing your leopard. So that is uh, from that point of view. Anything? So I now I ask. Thank you, sir. This is like a very philosophical source of information. Now I have a very legal question here. So I'm talking about the APC, National Tiger Conservation Authority. So you know that it's after APC intervention that they assured that you know this uh, <coughs> project will not affect right now solution projects. But NTC has been given a very important uh, major role in this whole project. You see the APC is that though I, I think every authority they have the power from the act. You know, the act is very clear. It's just, uh, the uh, purpose of the duty of the ATCA, National Tiger Conservation Authority, is to conserve tigers and their habitats. It includes approval of some tiger reserve land, you know, controlling ecological assessment practices. So they did a very good job. The ID state governments for the to tiger, like managing tiger reserves. And, but NTCA really exercised their position beyond tigers. If they complain to the NTCA, they say, you know, this is happening in this way, they say, no, no, our position, our position is only with the tiger reserves. In this case, NTCA has taken a special interest and they have given a special mandate to do that thing. Now, I was talking to Dr. Asad Rahmani, who is a former creator of AHS, asking him question, this question. And he said that Project Tiger is the most successful conversion project in the world, if not world in India. It has somehow, like, you know, brought the Tiger's back from all this thing. But he was the same opinion that he is strongly opposed to it. The NTCA's intervention in the project is really wrong. And he believes that NTCA should, should, NTCA should privately focus on the Tiger's only, on the species. And if the government in India thinks that you know we need to bring some separate authority or separate fund for it, then you create a separate body and you create a separate fund for it. Let's not NTCA distract itself from Tiger to Chita. So would you like to uh, respond to this role of NTCA and what Dr. Rahmani has said? Thank you. Dr. Asad Rahmani is a very esteemed friend and I always have given great interest to his opinion. This has been called. Um, uh, uh, project was assigned to project uh, to the NPCA of my suggestion. Uh, and there is a reason which uh, I have not shared with anybody. One was that at that time there was a person there who preferred to put, put, uh, put, put behind who was suited but who was shown with something more, it should not be the tiger versus the other. Uni ko diya, uni ki responsibility. They make the thing. You see, it's human, as it was deliberately done. If you, we have given it and created another body, it would have been tiger versus the cheetah. Bureaucracy. We are territorial people. We are more territorial than some tigers. <laughs> so, yes. So, uh, instead of having 
cheetah versus and the cheetah would have lost against the tiger. <clears throat> to me, somehow, you work out a, a thing between the tiger and the cheetah. It's a very smart move. 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 It's a very so, uh, before I open this uh, session for the question for audience, I have last one, one last question. I had many questions, but I think we are also time bound. One last question is that uh, in India we had Asian cheetah, and we tried to bring the original species, first species of the Asian cheetah from India. We didn't su succeed. But then, do you think that uh, if we bring African cheetah, it's not an introduction now, it's not a reintroduction. If you see the change in the, in the nomenclature, it was initially an introduction, it's not an introduction of cheetah. Primarily because it's an African subspecies. Now, that also might be no, it is not an Indian species, it's being borrowed from other, other country. So, do you think this uh, introduction of African cheetah will bring back the same glory and pride which we take in conserving tiger, one hand rhino, or uh, this uh, other species we have saved, uh, somehow managed to uh, bring back to extinction? What is the personal opinion on this? Uh, I would have liked nothing more than to bring the Asia. I had an agreement with them, but that's history. Things change. The most important war that Shah of Iran fell with the Jita population went down. It was the Polar Bill of Abu. Abu, so uh, they were ready uh, to give the Jita. They were ready even to say it. But now we dare not have it. So it, they never refused us. They never but that is now history. Now it's a question of is it not either or? It's a question of it's not cheetah versus the tiger, uh, the cheetah versus the lion. It is one more, one more icon in the Indian pantheon of thirty-three thousand devtas. Uh, so one more, one more icon. Yeah, it's not so 
ये सब चेंज सस्टेन ब्लेसिंग आई हैव टू फ्रॉम ऑल द वे फ्रॉम नेविया टू हियर सो बट इफ दैट इज द थिंग द अदर थिंग इज दैट इज इट इज द सेम स्पीशी इट इज आल्सो द सेम आदि एंड द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट थिंग टू नो दैट व्हाई व्हाई एज इट इज चीता गुडे इज वेरी वैल्यूएबल इन मोनालिसा दीस अदर वंस अदर वंस आर 250 आर शॉर्ट आई थिंक अयर तो दो पांच मर जाएंगे तो इतना यू नो टू नो नी नॉट हैव टू शेड सो मेनी टीयर्स तो इसीलिए बिकॉज दे दे विल बी केयर एंड वी कैन ट्राई दैट इन इफ दे कैच ऑन आई थिंक आई थिंक अदर स्टेज टू आल्सो लाइक दैट and if therefore you can have more than one uh, there is another great uh, ambition the uh, the iranian chita and this is i don't want to be shared but it's just their dream of a gold hand if uh, our chaps our boys a very good luck We don't. We uh, have ego. We do not admit ego. Like a uh, driver, we say that we know everything. We know, but we learn very fast. We did not know how to read a a, a proper diary. We became such experts that uh, we had to stop. That's why I say, driver project or the the, the proper diary project is stop. <laughs> we 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 won. So at the same time. There was a time we we did not know how to tranquilize the tiger. I've seen a tiger die. We didn't know how to tranquilize. Today we are experts. If we become experts in Chita, we will send our boys to save the the Americans. Because the Americans have gone. Those who have collaborated with the Americans have been one uh, Iranian man has shot the others are in Spain and Portugal. Okay, Iranian. It will be a collaboration with the American. If we, our boys, can go, we will get a diplomatic thing. We, we will be able to probably help save this. Our boys can do that. So that's that's a dream. Well, you have to seek out the one, but we can. We have the ability to do so. So uh, now, long term. Yeah. So now we can take some questions from the audience. Yes. Uh, So I can see you. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So I will go focus yeah. on this side. All right. The Tariqa. Yeah. Um. First of all, thank you, sir, for the excellent talk. It has been very enlightening for all of us. I have a small question. Uh, noted ecologist Manu Bertil has said that the Wildlife Protection Act uh, is hanging people and should and it should be scrapped. That people should have the right to defend themselves as a property against wild animals, and that wildlife should be seen as a renewable resource that should be uh, harvested so i wanted to know your opinion on that matter since you are the chief of tech of law uh he is a very esteemed friend <laughs> <laughs> we have been collab we have been we have been comrades in our अपन बोला पे फिर वो बदल भी जाते हैं तो अब ऐसा है फिर भी से इस प्रमेय से तो फर्स्टली इस है डेट यू आज इट राइट ऑफ प्राइवेट डिफेंस सेक्शन ये जब टू दी प्रोवाइड वी टू मेक यू आई ना प्रोटेक्शन आई सेक्शन ये जब Provisory. You have the right to self-defense when I'm drafting the land, and um, for 15 days I argued that I got my way. He said you must provide the uh, the right to self-defense. So I said yes, but at that time you should not have been committing another offense, which means. Then you should not be in possession of an illegal arms, which is violation of the Indian Arms Act, and you should not be carrying a weapon in the national park or sanctuary, which is not allowed under the Wildlife Protection Act. 
then you can exercise. If you are legally allowed to do at that time, it's 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 a good deal. But it's, it's a good good deal. That uh, you should not be. So you have the right of private defense. Now what? The right of private defense of what? In crops. You go and pro uh, plant tree a uh, uh, sufficient thing in the middle of the area. In anything. And you expect animals not to come in. Aapko kisne kaha tha to aja ke You see today why don't we move on? I, you see, uh, this business of man-animal harmony <laughs> is fine as far as it worked, but no more. <clears throat> because we do not do this exploitation for our sensitivity, we go to say. So, uh, for a need it's something, but for commercial purposes, there is a there will be a conflict if you are living in no habitats, they are only there. And that conflict, if you regard that you have a right to defend your crops and kill every animal who walks into it, then I say, what right have you to be there? You go out and the mm -hmm. government is prepared to settle you out. One of the best things I've done in my life to set by the first two villages to go out doing a national park was so, uh, my brainchild, if I may call so. I haven't mentioned it that. But yes, after that, so many, 23 more, uh, 21 more villages went out to Ghana after the first two. Some of them from that I got out. And they are all happy outside. The other why is out. There you have every right of you should be given compensation. And the right of self defense is there, but not the right of self defense. If you want to go or to have a crop in it, so then don't have any. Then say simply that it is one. Secondly, he said that it is unconscious. The Indian constitution is, uh, is one of the very few constitutions in the world where it is the fundamental duty of the citizen to protect forest and wildlife. Wildlife are separate words because that's what the constitution is. That's why when I drafted the act, I wanted the wildlife conservation act. This is like to constitution where but no fair is cooker. So wildlife alert karagi and the kush dharma dalki. It was not allowed that way. But now have wildlife separate because that's what the constitution says. So you are, and there is no such thing as fundamental view a right without fundamental good pro quo. Say that or not. So it's your duty. More importantly, more importantly, uh the directive principles of state policy policy says the, the governments shall not will shall protect forest and wildlife. So are these unconstitutional? Are those constitutional clauses unconstitutional? Then you can say the Wildlife Protection Act is unconstitutional. Yeah, so actually you answered it quite well. And now we don't we know why we have to separate the wildlife. We always been discussing why this term is different. So now I see a couple of hands, so I'll first go to this two hands. Maybe ma'am, you can just briefly you can ask me yeah. Yeah. Good evening, Dr. Just very, it's actually very similar to what we've just been discussing. That you know, in the history of conservation, we've always seen whenever reintroductions have taken place, uh, the whole yeah, a little louder. Uh, I'm saying in the history of conservation, we've, we've seen across India uh, that whenever reintroductions have taken place and they've been successful, uh, the local population kind of being involved, you know, to prevent issues like poaching and all of that. So now that we're so close to the deal with the China coming in, are we doing enough with the local population in Kumu and what more can we do to ensure that there's pride in the local people because without them, it will not succeed? Absolutely. You are hundred percent right. Thank you very much for that question. You see, in a democracy that we this is where government fails. And that is their NGO should come in. And I have been insisting in Madhya Pradesh that they must get NGOs involved because they are the capitalists. They can be the via uh, the uh, the connecting um, the bridge between the people, global people and the government. Uh, very few governments have the government of the attitude 
of going to the people. You see, today, they must feel that this is their own, that this is the thing, and they must, they must have a stake in it. They must get some benefits out of it. Uh, and this partly it is tourism, partly it is. Because unless they, if there is angst, if there is animosity, then uh, the challenge is far, far too much. And as you said, the chances of success. So this is going to be a primary area. And if any of you know any NGOs, I'm, I'm trying to send some people in there too. But the local people who are gathered there, who are gathered back here, this is going to be a, this is far more important than the upgradation of the past. And the uh, premise is improving the previous well, uh, but the, the involvement of the local people is crucial. Thank you. So I will take some questions from there, two more questions from the right side, try to balance from the left as well. So Bahar, how questions. are you going to balance the gender? Only the ladies are asking. Are you asking? I'm sorry, I'm standing up with another. I just to... So, so Bahar, you're still going to mind because you it. Yeah, uh, okay, I can listen. <laughs> yes. I wanted to ask you, sir, just to build the context of that interview which was quoted was Dr. Wagner was speaking to me in that interview where he said bylaws laws are unconstitutional. I just wanted to give a context to it because a lot of people uh, have raised uh, you know, objections to it that how is he saying this as an ecologist. I, uh, what he said was that the fact that people have been denied their rights, uh, it was said in that context. And the fact that we haven't invested in communities to... Um, <coughs> Not as SOPs that okay, we'll give you biogas, we'll give you chulhas, now you, in return you protect tigers. He was talking about security of tenure, land rights. In that context, he said that it is unconstitutional because our constitution is embedded in the principle of democracy. And I think that when we say let's take people out of parks, that to him, he was saying, is an undemocratic process. So, given all this, I want to ask you that do you think that we have failed communities in some ways in this model of conservation of let's move them away from nature and then everything will get protected. Tourism will come in, outside Puno, these uh, fancy resorts will come in and the cheetah is going to get protected and we just move people out. So is this model of conservation failing and that's what I, I think that's what Dr. Gartley was trying to ask. And I think just by calling him an old man or whatever, I think we we kind of not addressing the elephant in the room. No, I did not mean to denigrate. Oh, no, I know you did not. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is not. No, but uh, this is not mother and you. Is is changed. Is uh, is. But he says everybody has the right to change. Now why it is come about, I don't. And I don't want to mention. I have great regard for it. But coming to the, the basic issue, yes, you see, when human beings are living cheap by jobs, as it were, with the wild animals, within the thing, they is going to be this. I, uh, the, the right of uh, the tribal, but I, uh, you see, one is their right. The other is the misuse of it. In this country, uh, laws are very well framed. They are not in prison. That's very well framed. But the Forest Rights Act, uh, I have a number of things to say about it. You see, uh, you may denigrate whatever you say about the Indian Forest Act of 1927 against which they say that uh, it was colonial element. Fine. The human population increased vastly. But all the time they have been settled in Madhya Pradesh, there have been five settlements. Almost every time government comes out, and I was sorry city, so I should know. And that was at that time that this was a part of Madhya Pradesh. Would say we will settle this encroachment to you, but no further. We will be very strict. But that itself gave an impetus. K. Thoda 
साल में बहुत कर लो वो मैं पॉलिटिक्स है कोई से फाइव टाइम्स इट इज बीइंग सेट एंड इफ आई मे से सो पर्टिकुलर पार्टी वाज आई थिंक द नेम इज चेंज बट दे स्टार्टेड विद दिस एंड इट स्टार्टेड ऑफ इन करो बट दैट्स हिस्ट्री You see, uh, can do I have a right of anything that I've been good from? Is that right? Today, if I go there and say I'm sitting there, uh, I live in Seri Park, which is also to be uh, you know illegal. But the land position is not legal. The change is illegal. Tomorrow, if I go and in Coach Park, it's it. I'll be here for twenty years or forty years, so it's fine. Uh, does that become a right? Is that constitutional? That you should be settled with you. One. Secondly, uh, secondly, which takes priority in a protected area? Human or wildlife? You make up your mind. If you say that everywhere, everywhere, human needs will have to be met with, that human rights have to be first satisfied. As I said yesterday in that interview with, um, which is there, um, the Lok Sabha team, um, as Gandhi ji said, that there is enough. Nature for the need of everyone. There is nothing in nature for the greed of anyone. Today, are we going to say only that which remains is the residue after after satisfying both the need and the greed of everybody? Then you might as well not have the Ministry of Environment. Which what is governance? Is it that we want a democracy? Is democracy tomorrow going to say that ये हमारा है क्योंकि हम यहाँ रहते हैं कब से अबे बीस साल से तो हमारा हो गया जंगल में जा के बस जाओ तो बचा क्या यू सी यो वेरी वेरी यू प्रोसेस होगी इफ यू वांट टू से दैट ह्यूमन राइट्स मस्ट बी ऑनवर्ड एवरी टू ह्यूमन नीड्स मस्ट बी Where does human rights come I mean, to? Uh, tomorrow I go and, and do something illegal, and that's in my. This is this is the problem. <clears throat> With all their faults, the British had worked out the decision of settlement. Now you say twenty-seven to what time? Oh yeah, you know, hundred years. I'm here. Yeah. But have you been settled where you have no authority? Then uh, does. Uh, demographic occupation justifying uh, settlement all the time. You know what has happened and what is happening. <laughs> People have been given land. It's been proved under the Forest Rights Act. People have been given land on patas, and after the patas, the forest has been cleared. This is bad implementation. So that's also politics in this country. Uh, the land, the forest. This is in Vidha. Forest has been cleared after the patas have been given. Uh, so, if you if you go into that kind of a thing, there is no end. Then, as I said, forget everything. जो लोगों को करना है वो करने के रोको नहीं. Thank you, sir, for thank you so hard for everything. So, so sir, sir, please. We are going for that. I just wanted to add. So, no, no, please. You, you turn will come. Then you speak. Sorry. Uh, from there, I saw. But then, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, so, uh, it was very wonderful to hear you talk. I just wanted to ask: um, If we live in India, where conservation did not require identifying icons and uh, carrying forward conservation on their back and in their name. Uh, would you uh, ideally protect their conservation mode? There would be another species 
some other kind of um, project on mission mode that you would select this requiring for organization. I didn't get the question. There are two other options. I didn't. I probably get it. The last bit is your question. The last bit is the question. Basically, instead of icons, if we had to choose things, species that were especially sensitive for the health of an ecosystem, would you, in your mind, have some species in mind other than the cheetah? Oh yes. Yes. Oh yes. Great Indian bustard. And so many others. Yes. I call them so many. Great Great Thar. For the big things, so I could go on and on. So you could, and that is that would be whole purpose of of getting the states adopted to uh, adopt uh, a state animal and the state bird and the state tree. Because by ये तो आपके पास ही आप ये देश जो और and and I am on record to tell. Omar Abdullah in a wild and warm meeting. That famous sea has to have a sheep farm. Sheep farm which could go out to Dachika after 40 years of killings. And then I said that this after cabinet decision was not made. And I said that अगर ये कश्मीर स्टैक स्टेट है, only found in कश्मीर named after कश्मीर, I'm sorry, कश्मीर स्टैक, if the कश्मीर स्टैक goes next in खुदा न करे मेरी जिंदगी में जो होगा, अगर जो ये next in हो जाए, ये कोशिश है मार के आप देखें, please adopt merino sheep as the state animal. And and you will have the dubious distinction of being the only political entity in the history of the world which has lost a living emblem. This does apply to England, which never had the lion. He went red in the face and he told order to promote the club. But this is it. You have to have some kind of an icon, some kind of a thing to catch on to, and with that you can can do a lot of things. Why not? Okay, so, 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 so he was trying to say something. You want to? Yeah. On, on the mic, please. <laughs> 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 what I was saying is that uh, what the point that she was talking about, if you're taking someone's land, then doesn't the Land Acquisition Act come in and this that's been revised now and that would compensate them? Or is that is the Forest Act come? It goes about the. No, it's this. Land acquisition act is there, but I'm talking about illegal occupation, encroachment. For that, for that you don't have to have. You can throw out people. I mean, you can't keep on encroaching on government land, or you can't encroach on on public land. So that is one part of the story. The other is. That today, tremendous packages, when I started off, I gave them double the land for what each of them. If you are 10 acres, you got 20. And this is the advantage of, of a bureaucracy. I could utilize 24 schemes which were ongoing to help them. Free tractorization, free bullocks, free seed, free transport, digging of wells, school buildings, the works. And people who have come after me now, there are more schemes, 28 schemes and 30 schemes people have used to. If you want, so don't go jana, if they know, forcing of it, they now have policy. But if you do that, they get 10 lakh plus. But so I could get that, double to that. So it's a question of giving them a package and then saying if they want to go. It is not a question, but if 95% of the people want to go, then the others will have to go. But if you go select them, go where you want to go. These are the land where you will select. And you went. And they will save so much, you know, damage from animals. Access to schools, access to markets. Ultimately, that is the solution, if they can be given. And you know who? 
uh, old and black serving you because that's a bread no matter. I'm sorry, but it's true. So, sir, I saw some heads from there that said very hundred. Good evening, sir. So, I'm uh, talking about Madhya Pradesh and getting invested. So, there is one wildlife sanctuary in Madhya Pradesh uh, which is named after Bustards in Karera of Shivpuri district. So, which is almost on the verge of being denotified by the approval of the Supreme Court. So, talking about this and drawing from the question that he asked, why is it that the conservation icons have always been a carnivore and not a herbivore like a great in Bustard? or not a bird species, but always a mammal. Is, it a, is, there, is there some reason for this? Just to add to it, it's not one, two centuries, first centuries for the development. You touched, you spoiled my day. I established the data. He was 28 percent. But I did not name it after the I did wrong to name it after. It's not called the basket. It's called a century. Later on, people may have said so. You know, after this thing, yeah, I, think I established the Sarana Sanctuary for the Florican um, uh, and the Sadarpur Sanctuary also the Florican. But they were not called Florican Sanctuary, they were not called Buster Sanctuary. But you know today what has happened? Uh, once you identify this name, then you say, if Florican Kiri Banaigi, Florican Yan Naya, so they notify her. Sadhana uh, is being denotified, Sadhaku is already denotified and Karera is going to go to because there are no busted there. Nara hai pass the Bhadra Bhaje Basuri. So, uh, one of the issues which is common in uh, human areas is that of feral dogs. Like the same as a concern in protected wildlife centuries also. And now there are some laws which allow for uh, Sterilization of animals by declaring them vermin, but same is not the case for feral dogs. So, what and the same will be a concern if cheetahs are being produced uh, because the feral dogs they spread diseases and attack wild animals. So, what do you think an ideal law and policy framework in context of ferals should look like? Lucky you visit Menka Gandhi is not here, <laughs> otherwise, I would have had a rough uh, time arguing. I believe, and this is true, that uh, the biggest menace today to wildlife, more than man, poaching. I haven't had depression yet. Poaching, the dogs are responsible for death of more <coughs> unrelated than human beings. They're seeing a lot. There are over 8,000 feral dogs in Changsang, Gagakum. Thanks to the border road organization and the, uh, and the army and the police, I can make them. So they keep them there, they have their food, or the sick, or who Rajivari Karte, Ratu, they bark like that. And they have formed packs. They have driven away wolves, that's one thing. They have not only killed, ultimately action was taken against them in Sikkim when they killed a Jawan and ate them. They killed Jankas. They have now started killing human beings. You forget about the other diseases like uh, rabies and all that. They threaten them. They are and they killing the but a bone ko kya kare? City baate they should be destroyed. But they they the uh, protection uh, the prevention of cruelty to animals act has been said that after neutering the dogs they should be reduced they uh, uh, put back again. I've seen them running after cheetah in the middle of the Madhavra National Park. So what you say is absolutely correct. And this is what we recommend in the Wildlife Protection Act too that you you should declare them as government. <coughs> so we will not hand so good evening sir, I am very glad that you got title in the conversation. Sorry? Uh, you got title in the, this conversation. Uh, conversation. So uh, I had a question, it might find, uh, sound unreasonable or stupid. So just uh, I would be glad if you answer the question. So my question is, uh, let's say Cheetah project uh, doesn't go well. And as you said, you will be happy to get uh, the title back in court. Okay. 
it doesn't work. So why in the first place was the character chosen? Because it's been like uh, as the cheetah went extinct and there was a place in the food chain. So it, if a new predator is introduced, it was a very good crucial time. And also it's been like uh, we are uh, doing like cheetah uh, look, was extinct in 1950 and there is more 40 years till it becomes fully uh, like fully capable in Kuno Pasu. So why wasn't character chosen in the first place then? Because it shares the same grassland mosaic. The character is one of the 27 animals critically endangered. I actually moved this um, after retirement that there should be a category for critically endangered animals and they should be on the chance to be recovered. There is a thing, but nothing much has happened about character recovery. Character uh, itself will not be, unfortunately, doesn't mean to me. I'm very glad to make this point for character. You see, it doesn't have that kind of a statue. Uske piche baak chi ho sakti against the name of the thing. Tiger ke piche baak If you say character people will laugh, people didn't even, I even move for the Great Indian Buster. The whole uh, thing, a project for the Great Indian Buster, it will not move. Even then. Uh, but the project elephant was approved. Project elephant is actually a superimposition on many of the tiger area. We should have gone into the grassland there. But um, I was overruled. <coughs> so, so character itself will not be. Will give feature feature a lot of, uh, as I said, cascading effects over. Thank you, sir. So now we are already running out of time. Can take one last question if. Any yeah, I just ask you that to Mike, sir. What next about the lion translocation? Do we see political will on that moving at all? Please ask uh, the government of India. Oh, you have been closely involved with no. the things. Uh, what is your opinion on it? No. Uh, your guess is good as mine. That, uh, look, the lions can come in. The lions will come in into, uh, and, and it is said that either lion come in or the cheetah which will open both will come in. But the lion is not going to come very soon. Um, if at all. Um, because uh, of reason we all know that. Gujarat doesn't want to lose its own up. So, yeah, okay. I don't know whether land people, when they start walking out of the, out of uh, Gujarat, will they be brought back to prevent them from walking out? <laughs> <laughs> and I come from Gujarat, I was born there. So, <laughs> so, it's an interesting thought. No, um, we all hope that it will happen. I can't tell you because it's very good. That's quite honest answer. So there's one last question I can take from her. There we go. So do you have time? I have as much time as you want. Just get that. We can take three more questions. Our favorite subject. So we take three more questions now. So first time from. So given your reference to legal issues in the Supreme Court stay order, I was wondering through all of these projects, project which stay order. Uh, of the Supreme Court for on the cheetah reintroduction, there was some mention of it. But I have a more general question. Through all of these projects, have there been any enduring legal issues that have come up as roadblocks for all of them? Just a. Uh, I can get it. Look, they, uh, they, uh, the Supreme Court order was a little unusual. Uh, it said that the lion, uh, that the lion should uh, come in Kumu and not the cheetah. But it did say that cheetah uh, uh, could not be brought elsewhere. What it said was, which heard, that the cheetah project was illegal. 
and that put up my hackles. So, um, and the Supreme Court can rectify that. Uh, because if there was nothing legal about it, the Supreme Court was misled that it had not been approved by the Indian Board for one year. And that it was not in consonance with the Iustine guideline. Both of it was wrong. So that is why called it legal. Twice it has been uh, uh, approved in the National Board for one year. So, so but what was the other part of your question? I did. I just, uh, that got me thinking, are there any yeah, yeah. consistent legal roadblocks or issues? Roadblocks to are there. Roadblocks will be there. Roadblocks have been there throughout one's thing. But uh, you see, uh, that makes life interesting. She said yeah. legal roadblocks. No, legal, legal roadblocks. No, not. Uh, this was a roadblock because they said it was illegal. And now, and therefore, we went up in review. And the Supreme Court said it's not illegal. And then, when they pointed him out, uh, I was the only one standing there. Was, um, one other thing, there was nobody from the government. And, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court heard me and then passed the order. And then the Amicus Curious again. Which, person who misled him in the first place, said, sir, they said, ah, we are not Indian. All right, he said, introduction. Are you satisfied? <laughs> so he kept quiet. He said, this is not reintroduction, they were not there. So they did introduction. So, okay, they so he did all that. Anyway, so roadblocks, so roadblocks are not so much of law. There is no roadblock except for that particular thing because I think roadblocks are from human beings, personally. And, and problems like uh, uh, because money has to work. But you see, in my time there were men, there was no money. Now there is a lot of money. Oh, the whole thing that you see, you done by seven people. A person can change. Oh, if you believe really seven people then I would name four hundred and seven. Seven. Look which we are taking over South Logan America. And I wouldn't think that would have been uh, all my life. But it was they were dedicated people. And they 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 changed. So, um, you know, there are some very good people, but there is no political support. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so now I will take two more questions. One from, I think I saw his hand was sorry. <coughs> and then next one. Maybe you raising hand before we go. Maybe you both go, please. Namaste, sir. I am actually happy to hear you and I am also happy to tell you that I am also from Jurabai to Bihar, sir. You are a loud guy. No, no, Joseph Michael also. Sir, I am happy to hear you and I am actually also happy to like say that I am also from Jurabai to Bihar. So like there is a reintroduction of uh, the Jita and it is like, uh, like to reach like, the maximum like the uh, carry cap is a very, very long period. During that, like even we know like the ecotourism is ongoing in the entire India and that is actually debatable issue right now. So at that time, like when the like population is growing more, like when you are doing the experiment in lab. So like, what kind of gazer will you take? And even right now, like when we are talking about ecotourism, it is more about like, like it was just for the education or research purpose. Now it is more being like tourist space or something like that. Like rather than we say like the plastic or whatever, it is, but it is being like more kind of like tourist tourist place. So like, like what we will do like next now? So sir, so, yeah, yeah. I just I just I just heard what he said. He said that. Uh, in the garb of this conservation thing, like, there are a lot of like, commercialization of the project. People are taking tourism and all these things. So the tourism is getting priority over conservation. Right? This is what he meant. Yes, unfortunately, that is true. Uh, uh, the tail wagging the dog. Um, I believe in um, that 
Parks are not for tourism. Tourism is for the parks. That parks have a status of their own because they are the last repositories and safeguards of the national natural heritage. And the tourism interest must be concomitant to it and not the other way around. There was an appalling move which was brought down that every animal must have a value. Does an animal have to have a value for it to be survive to survive in this country of Gandhi and Buddha? The constitutional right is there to withdraw. Every animal must have a value. So tiger has more value than a chinkara, and a chinkara has more value than a hair. It will pass money. And this is tourism. And tourism, and I don't go to parks anymore. It's demanding to see 80 cars lined up, and people talking about Tamasha. So uh, this is not, this is not, uh, you see, you visit a national park for communing with nature, not to go at some few animals. And, the, and tourism has ruined it. But at the same time, tourism can be a great um, tool for conservation if you manage it properly. And I use tourism to save certain habitats, certain um, species. So it, 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 it's a it's, um, depth position and a synonymy, but it has to be properly used. But tell me, you are from Gujarat, you want lions to go anywhere? <laughs> and you want your monopoly? Yes, I want like to soon be spread as a condition. So sir, uh, we are also short of time, so we have to take two more questions because we don't want to... Uh, so please do and then... Uh, yeah, I'll go fast. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the inviting talk. Uh, so, my, uh, to my knowledge, the plan is mostly top down in top down approach as for the, as like the past plans, which have the same mistakes in uh, to my sense. What, so, my question really is uh, why all the plans are do not consider this uh, bottom down approach and take the major uh, stakeholders into account like uh, pastoralists. And this leads to another question that why do not we why we do not have a policy to manage grasslands as you pointed out. Thank you. You see, uh, bottom. You see, this is the the interesting part of this country, uh, and I've written it in my book. It, it's a paradox. India is one of the easiest of the developing countries in the world for conservation, despite this huge human problem. Because there is an empathy for nature. We are vegetarian, large community, not like Africa, where everybody is a meat eater and every third person is a truck or We have, oh, Amari Waham, already uh, parks and sanctuaries of the shooting areas in the areas in the and 85% of those areas were actually the our parks and sanctuaries. So, no empathy three. But we blew it in the first 10 20 years. That's one part of the story. The thing is that India, the conservation has always come from the top, not from below. And this is the sad part of it. Uh, we are not active conservation. If I may say so, we keep our houses very clean. We throw so the dust just outside our house, not in a problem. So, there is no great moment here. Conservation does not get you votes. This is the whole problem. And people talk about conservation in somebody else's constituency, not in your own. I have I've I've, I've heard uh, in Mrs. Gandhi's time, in Mrs. Gandhi's time, I had a member of parliament from, from uh, uh, Andamans give a brilliant speech for conservation. 
But when Mr. Gandhi was sitting there, the second day he comes to my office and says, ye, ye, so, you know what he said? He said, what is your policy? 23% policy, you want to make it 33%, I have 85% policy, let me come down to 33 So, you see, conservation is, we, we, are, we need to have that active thing, we need this thing and that is where NGO should be. Government ये नहीं कर सकती, करेगी। This green thing that 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 we will vote for you. Let's go have green party elsewhere. Why is there not a a green oriented party? Why in the manifestos of the large political parties there is nothing on conservation? I would like to point that it's actually opposite in the manifesto of the one party. Uh, which I am not going to name, uh, in the section of Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change. In the first point, it's mentioned that uh, in, uh, we'll uh, work on giving fast track uh, uh, clearances to uh, improve ease of doing business, which is uh, just a sham in itself, uh, as we found. Just to add on to, sir, uh, uh, like, since. Uh, <laughs> Uh, why don't uh, the government take uh, pastures into uh, confidence before uh, using civil society as a measure uh, so there won't be a conflict when the time comes of uh, re uh, rehabilitating or relocation. So because they, it's for, it becomes forced location. I found out in a document of uh, Project Cheetah of 2000 uh, where uh, government has allocated 40 crores uh, forty crore uh, to allocate for 30 villages, uh, but uh, and uh, like they were not sure of like how they are going to do that. And in case of like there is a report by Survival International of the uh, that volunteer uh, relocations were really forced. Uh, Actually, you should summarize the question because we don't have time. And, uh, yeah, so, question was so that's my question was how, uh, why doesn't a government take the initiative using civil society to take into confidence the uh, past lives or all the major, major stakeholders, basically, in our bottom down, bottom to top approach? Yeah. As far as uh, resettlement is concerned, the policy now. You, you cannot uh, uh, arbitrarily set the villages. Uh, they are taken into consideration. The package given is very good. And therefore, there is a move to a manipulation taken in the middle of this. And people have also come to realize that it is better for them to move out if they get the thing to end rather than uh, be as a problem for the next two or uh, four generations. So they are moving out. There is, uh, there is no and uh, no forcing uh, uh, forceful resettlement. Forceful resettlement for projects in Altai which are getting submerged, where land acquisition has come there. But the other part of keeping the government, uh, taking the local people into confidence in everything else, uh, the government is not, it, it is a very important aspect, but it doesn't happen because the government is not geared up for this. Very few officers really go out and get into that. If this is as I said in the end, you can do a far better job. Government can make a correct person be a job. So, next, uh, this is our last question. Hello, sir. Thank you everyone for listening to this very last question. But I just wanted to ask, uh, let's say you spoke about. Uh, how bureaucracies work in the context of wildlife protection. What I want to ask is that in your experience when there is a project which may take say 30-40 years for showing its actual outcome, then what helps the bureaucracy sort of maintain that uh, stamina over time of 30-40 years to sort of implement it religiously? What are the sort of uh, things that incentivize the bureaucracy to take such long-term projects? Um, one is a, sort of a personal feeling of, one is commitment. But uh, commitment, 
commitment to conservation, like some of you do have, mm -hmm. most of you do have, uh, that is rather rare now, unfortunately, but it's there. Some people are very good and they are committed. The other thing is the personal factor. The personal factor could be of the ego that many ye kiya. Ye nai chiz ki, many ye contribute kiya. And that uh, needs to be harnessed. Not in concrete uh, construction ki many ye rope banaya, many ye wash towels banaya, that's silly. That's, uh, but that's happening. So, uh, but humne ye achieve kiya and uh, ye habitat ye ho gaya, tiger ke number ye bar gaya, ye ho. Ye ho hota hai because you see the changes. Anything that is of, of a project nature attracts attention and uh, they become, uh, they, they, they feel that they are in the mainstream. Because a person is looking uh, um, at his own promotional I have been told that, uh, and I'm the naive officer, you are over specializing and uh, it will affect your promotion. You should diversify because um, the Indian administrative service is a chitra system. You know, <laughs> you are supposed today you are uh, looking after uh, uh, municipal affairs. Tomorrow you are looking after foreign trade. Thursday you are looking after health, uh, or health secretary, all that. Uh, you don't specialize. So, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, they are looking at that aspect of their. Uh, there was a time when nature conservation, wildlife conservation, and the project Tiger was so attractive that people wanted to go and join that uh, wildlife wing or that particular thing. But then there are others who have it. When it is not, wildlife was supposed to be a punishment posting, a dumping place. You see, because of the importance of the, of the uh, topic. So, when you, when something comes into notice, like any project, any new project, they feel their privilege and that they will get attention and that the bosses will also think it will help, it will, it will help their promotional uh, prospect. Here yeah, factor with that. And they feel that they are doing something new, that they are changing, that they are making a difference. That is very important for anybody to be a man in May in his state of So I think uh, now we uh, So many questions. I am very uh, like, enthusiastically answered each and every question. And how I am wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and very grateful. And there's a small token of appreciation uh, from the uh, small token of appreciation for you. Not a check, I hope. And uh, I would like to. Thank uh, Mr. Singh Singhal, the Minister of Foundation, for supporting the work of climate change systems team of the year. And I must tell you, this is the first time, uh, like our uh, we are having physical event since the pandemic. And uh, the great goes to my colleagues, Tarik Raja Singh here, Imam Shu, Mr. Shaman Mukherjee, Amit Kumar from NDC. A special thanks to Tom Stein, Richa Peshaw, and Kalam for arranging all these things. And of course, all of you who joined today. Uh, in this evening and being patient and you know asking great questions. I'm sure Dr. Uh, Singh also enjoyed this uh, interaction as we did listening to him. No, I have to thank you for it. So thank yes, you very much. Thank you. I really uh, thank you very much. It's been a very, very, uh, very enjoyable interview.